Looking for the best PC build for 1440p PC gaming? 1440p is quickly replacing 1080p as the de facto resolution for gaming, and with an onslaught of high performance parts, it's the perfect time to build a PC. What was once reserved for enthusiasts is now becoming the mainstream resolution. In this video, I'll break down my suggestions for three PC builds. All of them are built around AMD CPUs, since Intel can't really compete when it comes to value for budget and mid-range PCs. The first one focuses on getting the best performance for 1440p gaming on a budget with a decent upgrade path. The second one offers the best value today and will stay decent for 1440p gaming for many years ahead. The last one is an ITX option for those who want a console killing machine. Let's begin with the best budget PC first. It's no secret that AM4 is still the best platform for any budget gaming build. With so many options to choose from, it's easy to go with any 6 or 8 core CPU and call it a day. But as I'm looking for top-notch 1440p gaming performance, single-threaded performance matters more than anything else. This is why the Ryzen 5 5600X is simply the best budget CPU for gaming, if you're at a really tight budget. It's a 6-core, 12-threaded CPU with 32 megabytes of L3 cache, and this means that in pure gaming scenarios, it can keep up with far more expensive and overall more powerful CPUs, like the Intel Core i7 12700K. Another bonus of getting the 5600X is that AMD includes a stock cooler, and since it's an easy chip to cool, it keeps it under normal temperatures during any workload. In simple terms, it's the most affordable CPU for 1440p gaming on an amazing platform with a great upgrade path. Which brings me neatly to the motherboard. There's no shortage of AM4 motherboards. This socket alone spans nine different chipsets. But if I'm being honest, I almost always go with B550 over the rest. In some instances, I may go with an X570 motherboard, especially if the budget allows. But for this build, the MSI B550A Pro is the most appropriate choice. For its price, I don't think there's any other motherboard that ticks all the boxes with hardly anything to complain about. It has a great rear I.O., which even includes a BIOS flash button, and the VRMs are capable of sustaining even a Ryzen 9 5950X at modest overclock. What makes things easy with AM4 is the fact that there's also an abundance of affordable DDR4 RAM kits. For this build, I went with a 16GB Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM kit that runs at 3600MHz CL18. DDR4 is still keeping up well with DDR5 in terms of performance, and since they're half the price of DDR5 kits, RAM memory is probably the easiest place to save money, with zero compromises. One of my main reasons I recommend the B550 over any older AM4 chipset is that it provides PCI Express 4.0 support. Even though most people who are looking for bottom-of-the-barrel prices are swayed towards B450 boards, I highly recommend stepping up and going with B550. SSDs, like the Crucial P3 Plus 2TB, which I went for with this build, offer blazing fast speeds and a lot of room for games and other applications. This is especially handy with loading times, and as games start to take advantage of faster SSDs with technologies like Microsoft Direct Storage, storage speed will play a major role in gaming performance. Of course, while RAM storage and CPU play a major role in improving game performance, there's no other component that's more crucial than the GPU. The good news is that there's a lot of competition building up in the budget GPU category. I was initially inclined towards recommending an Intel Arc GPU, 
But while Intel has really stepped up their game, AMD is still dominant in this space, whereas Nvidia is hardly anywhere to be found. Out of all the GPUs I could choose from, I went with the XFX Speedster Swift 309 RX 6700 XT. The 6700 XT has cemented its place as the best mid-range GPU that can natively play games in 1440p and with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, it'll stay decent for many years, which is especially important if you're planning to stay with this PC for a long time. Moving on, if you care about the longevity of your PC, it's equally important to get a high quality case and power supply. I understand that this is a budget PC, and it's tempting to save as much as possible on these two. But don't forget that great PSUs and cases outlast the rest of the system and make it easier to upgrade to newer and more powerful components in future. The Corsair RM750E is perfect for the 5600X and RX6700 XT as it's way more powerful for them and will ensure they run at their best many years down the line. While a slightly cheaper power supply is a serious downgrade, PC cases don't have this issue. There are way too many cases to choose from, and it's the one component that I worry the least about. The Zalman S2 does a perfect job of keeping all the components safe while providing great airflow and ample room for large GPUs. In conclusion, if you want the most affordable PC for decent 1440p gaming, then the Ryzen 5 5600X and RX 6700 XT combo is hard to beat. This PC, with a total budget of around $850, is set to game at that resolution for many years to come, and it even has a decent upgrade path. Before we continue to the next mid-range build, it would really help us continue making more videos if you support us by just hitting the like button and subscribing, or even with a comment so that we know if you like it or if there's something we can do to improve next time. I promise it costs nothing, just a few seconds. So now let's continue with the best value mid-range PC build for 1440p gaming. If you have a budget of around $1,300 and you want the best 1440p gaming performance, then you shouldn't be considering anything else other than the AMD AM5 platform. That's why I went with the Ryzen 5 7600X, which has proven itself in benchmarks to be on the same level as an Intel Core i9-12900K for gaming. No matter the resolution, it'll have no trouble keeping up with any GPU. The only minor complaint I have is that it doesn't come with any stock cooler included. Nevertheless, it's quite an easy chip to cool, so I went with the Thermalrite Peerless Assassin 120SE. Moving on to the most important component in the entire system, the graphics card. I had the choice to either go with the RX 7800 XT or the RTX 4070, as they're both excellent GPUs for 1440p gaming. In the end, I went with the Sapphire Nitro Plus Radeon RX 7800 XT. Don't get me wrong, I love the RTX 4070, and I think it's a great GPU. But when you have an RX 7800 XT offering 16 gigabytes of VRAM at such a price, Nvidia simply doesn't have an answer. The RTX 4070 is similar in performance and has CUDA support, but the RX 7800 XT is just as capable, and if you care about your PC lasting a long time, it's not plagued with a lack of VRAM. Actually, it's a highly capable 4K gaming GPU, and it doesn't start to stutter like the 4070, since games can use up to 14 or 15 gigabytes of VRAM at 4K. Games are already consuming almost 11 gigabytes of VRAM at 1440p, which easily hands the RX 7800 XT a clear win. 
After allocating most of the budget to the CPU and GPU, I didn't want to overspend on the motherboard, but I also wanted something that covers all the basics really well, and would still be perfectly capable, even, say, around five years from now. MSI Pro B650MA Wi-Fi fits all of my requirements. Uh, for starters, it has a great 8-phase VRM that's capable of running a stock 7950X, which leaves a lot of room for upgrading the CPU. The rear I.O. is decent and has all the basics covered, like multiple high-speed USB 3.2 Type-A ports, Wi-Fi 6E, HDMI, DisplayPort, three 3.5mm audio jacks, and a BIOS flashback button. It's not going to turn anyone's heads, but for its price, it's an excellent motherboard for the system. Moving on to the RAM and SSD, I kept things straightforward, as always. A 32GB kit of Corsair Vengeance DDR5-6000 at CL30, and a 2TB stick of Samsung's 980 Pro. You could save up some money and get something like a 16GB kit of RAM and 1TB SSD, maybe even a PCI Express 3.0 SSD, but the fact of the matter is that doing that'll only hurt performance and won't save you a lot of money. These are boring choices, but they're predictably good choices. Another area where I may get flack is the power supply. I'll be honest, I don't like to risk the PSU at all, no matter how big or small the budget is. And this is why I keep on recommending the RM850E from Corsair. You can go with any PSU from a reputable brand, but I keep coming back to the RM850E as it offers everything a PSU should offer, such as ATX 3.0 support, high capacity, gold rated efficiency, and a very competitive price. For the PC case, I went with the Lian Li 216, which is incredibly flexible and offers a variety of building options that are simply missing from other cases. While I do typically recommend cases like the Corsair 4000D for a no-nonsense building experience, the 216 takes everything up a notch. Particularly, there are three areas that make the 216 unique. First, it's one of the most affordable cases for E80X motherboards. Second, the top panel is completely removable for even more space and easy fan or radiator installation, which is something almost no ATX mid-tower does. And third, it has native support for vertically mounting the graphics card if you want to show it off. There's hardly any case with this much customizability, while costing under $100, and it comes with great airflow as well. The 216 comes pre-installed with two 160mm intake fans and a 140mm exhaust fan, which means it can achieve the same airflow of four or five 120mm fans with just three fans. The only issue I have is that at stock settings, the front intake fans can get really loud under full intense load, which is great for airflow, but not so much for a calm and quiet environment. This isn't a problem during gaming, but you should still configure the fan curve to top out at 2000 RPM. In summary, it's a great time to build a gaming PC, for around a budget of $1,300, this PC can actually play games in 4K, which means that when it comes to 1440p gaming, it will literally fly. The RX 7800 XT can trade blows with the RTX 3090 in 1440p and 4K, while being a lot more efficient, and keep in mind, the RTX 3090 alone is a $1,500 GPU, and this entire PC is under that price.
Finally, let's take a look at our best 1440p gaming mini, ITX PC. Small form factor PCs are seeing a renaissance. Given how power efficient new PC components have become, the mini ITX PC community has seen a revival. In that spirit, I wanted to build a PC that can play games flawlessly at native 1440p while being similar in size as the latest consoles. For the CPU, I wanted something that's extremely power efficient and can churn out a lot of gaming performance. So, for that, I went with the AMD Ryzen 5 7600. Although I was really looking forward to building with a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, the 7600 ended up being the better choice. It's on a newer platform and has a significantly better upgrade path. And it's more efficient than the 5800X 3D while staying on its heels in gaming performance. Before looking into any other part in a mini ITX PC, the most important component is the case itself. I usually have a hard time picking the right mini ITX case because it's hard to know whether a component will fit inside it or not. That's why, whenever I'm in doubt, I go straight for the Cooler Master Master Box NR200. No matter how skilled of a PC builder you are, the NR200 will bring back the joy of building a mini PC, given how space efficient and easy it is to work with. My only issue with the case is that it looks plain and bland compared to other small form factor cases, but that's the price one has to pay for practicality. It can be taken almost entirely apart for easy access to all the nooks and crannies, so you're not fiddling around in a tight space. The CPU cooler clearance is excellent, and it can easily support a full-sized air cooler of up to 158mm in height, like the Hyper 212 EVO. For this build, I'm sticking with the stock cooler that comes with the Ryzen 5 7600, but if you ever plan to add a beefier cooler, it should be fine. Moving on to the motherboard, we finally have a lot more options to choose from compared to a few years ago. After looking at all the available options, I settled on the ASRock B650i Lightning Wi-Fi. For starters, it's really affordable given how expensive mini ITX motherboards tend to be. And on top of that, there's rarely anything missing here. It features a strong 8-phase VRM, a modest rear I.O., and PCI Express 5.0 M.2 SSD slot. The rear I.O. could use some improvement, but thankfully it doesn't miss any essentials. The NR200 can also support triple slot GPUs easily, but make sure they don't exceed and encroach on the fourth slot, as it won't be able to fit a card that thick. For a top-notch 1440p gaming experience on a decent budget, I naturally opted again for the RX 7800 XT. With 16GB of VRAM and some of the best gaming price-to-performance of this generation of GPUs, the 7800 XT should last you a very long time in modern AAA titles. Due to clearance issues, I was initially going to recommend the Sapphire Nitro Plus variant, but it's way too big for the NR200. Instead, I went with the Sapphire Pure model, which is just as good and fits easily into the case. The PC will consume nearly 350 to 400 watts of power during gaming, and for the PSU, I went with the Corsair SF750 because of its incredible platinum efficiency and room for up to 750 watts of power, which is enough for pretty much any type of a PC. Lastly, for RAM and SSD, as usual, I went with a 32GB kit of Corsair Vengeance DDR5-6000 CL30 and a 2TB stick of Samsung 980 Pro. 
Both of these options are still the overall value champions, and it's surprising that others haven't quite caught up to them yet. In conclusion, if you want a safe and sound option for building a mini ITX PC for 1440p gaming at max settings, then this should have you covered. With a budget of a bit more than $1,500, it not only plays games well, but it also is remarkably easy to upgrade. It's not a cheap PC, but it offers an excellent value for what you're getting, considering that many ITX PCs can be far more expensive than this one, with little to no improvements.